Well, you know, I was going to sit here and unbox and review all the new Godzilla vs. Kong toys and all the Playmates toys, in fact, now that I have a complete collection. And that's not happening, though. The universe said no. Hold off on that and then make another news video. So that's what we're doing. What's up everybody, d -Man back. Welcome to a brand new video and today we're gonna be doing another, I was gonna say reviewing, we're gonna be doing another Godzilla vs. Kong news and updates. Following the last video, when the Godzilla vs. Kong official image was revealed, I tweeted out saying that I wanted to see some Godzilla vs. Kong, King Kong vs. Godzilla 1962 throwbacks, putting Osaka Castle in between Godzilla and Kong, and you guys took that and then ran with it, and you guys produced some awesome stuff. So I figured we'll start this video by celebrating what you've done, kicking it off, we have an interesting version this is a bit of a different take than everyone else took from carter james 2005 who put godzilla and kong around the actual osaka castle in real life gave kong some nice red lightning fists good stuff i really like that take i wasn't expecting anyone to do that but it, it was cool when they did it kelvin zilla did his own version of it he gave us one yeah this is more or less what i was expecting would happen we have the osaka castle placed in between godzilla and kong childish landino took that and made his own rendition of it. He didn't take that version of it that Kelvin made. He took the original image and then made his own version of it. So he produced one. I like the color grading on Osaka Castle here to make it fit in with everything else going on. Goji 1999 did his own version. This one's cool as well. A little brighter than the others. Love the details here of Godzilla's hand wrapping around the castle and Kong kind of standing out in front of it as well, making it seem like it's actually part of the same environment they are in. That's really cool. Jokester Boy made like the true 1962 throwback. I really like this. They actually seem like they're in that 1962 environment. He put the tree covering in front and then he placed Godzilla and Kong in there. That's really cool. I love that. And again, you have the details here of Godzilla's hands wrapping in front of the castle. So again, it seems like they're actually interacting with their environment. Good stuff. Magara did his own rendition of it, which is a Godzilla vs. Kong Generations version where you can see these old rivals finally meeting again on the big screen after over 50 years. They're finally meeting again face to face and it is going to be awesome when they finally do. I will say, I wasn't entirely in love with that original image when it came out. If you guys watched my video, you know. I thought it was okay. It has grown on me quite a bit. There's something about the idea that Godzilla and Kong are finally going to see each other again after so many years. They're finally going to fight again, and this is our first look at that. That's so satisfying to me. But then there's everything else with the aircraft carrier and, you know, whatnot that makes me go, hmm, those are some big helicopters on the ground. How are they so tall? Godzilla and Kong looking mighty short. Nice booty, Kong. Also, I had I do have to address really quick before we continue. Yes, I'm well aware. I get it. You don't need to hound me in the comments. I am fully aware that the reason Kong is in this stance is because he's a gorilla, and this is a gorilla battle stance. I get it. I got hounded about that. The thing is, this Kong doesn't walk or stand or have the proportions of a gorilla, so when you pose him like a gorilla, he's looking thick af, and it's real strange. It's not quite what you would expect. Speaking of randomness and memes, the image became a meme in and of itself because of course it did. People took the challenge that I put out there and then decided to turn it into a meme challenge. And here are some of my favorites. Childish Landino's Godzilla vs. Kong vs. Jet Jaguar. I like that one quite a bit. This one might be my favorite. The McDave's Osaka Castle Revenge. Now we know what Godzilla and Kong must team up against in the new movie. Osaka Castle has come with its twin, also Osaka Castle, and it's time for revenge. I feel a little guilty about showing this image, considering it was specifically requested that there would be no reposts of it, but I'm transformative. This is me transforming this content by commenting on it. And also, I just want to give a huge shout out. Link down below to the original image. Go check it out. Just go support the artist. This comes to us from Rubez Draws, whose name I don't know if I pronounced right. They also thought that it looked weird. It's such a strange pose that Godzilla and Kong are in, because Godzilla's in his sumo pose, Kong is in his big gorilla booty pose, so they took the opportunity to make this awesome fan art of the two monsters posing off like anime superstars, and I love it. Great work. Once again, go support the artist. Andrew MV, who you should know the name by now, we feature a ton of his art, took this Godzilla vs. Kong image and turned it into an awesome banner. Of course he did. This guy is so talented, so of course I gotta show off more of his work. Speaking of some fan art relating to this image, Figure Mania Show did his own version of it, a Godzilla vs. Kong recreation picture. Figure Mania Show is one of the best, if not the best, Godzilla toy artists out there, in my opinion. He did his own rendition of 
of it featuring Godzilla and Kong fighting on top of the aircraft carrier in figure form. Good stuff, using a custom Kong and I believe the SH Monster Arts 2019 Godzilla and then an awesome little set here. His work is amazing. Getting into the news, let's get Roy into the news. X Plus released a 30 centimeter Kong Skull Island fighting pose figure a while ago. I've been meaning to just mention it, so there I mentioned it. Now that we've done that, we can move right along to Star Ace Toys Kong and Skull Crawler. This is an upcoming set, unlike the X Plus set, which is old. This is a new set that has been recently revealed featuring Kong fighting the Skull Crawler. There's a whole bunch of different variations of this. There's four different variations, if I'm not mistaken, with interchangeable bases, which I believe the base is just going to be this big water effect. And then you can take the Skull Crawler off, or you can take Kong off. So there's different versions of this, but overall, it's Kong fighting the Skull Crawler or the Skull Devil or Ramorak or MacArthur, whatever you want to call it. It's Kong fighting that dude. He's got the big chain with the propeller on it. He's got that from the boat. It's an awesome figure. I would absolutely love to get my hands on it, but I guarantee it will be quite pricey whenever it's released. And I don't know if I want to spend a ton of money at the moment, considering AdRev is in the dumps. Thank you, COVID. Speaking of COVID, this news sucks. Not that I had anything invested in this personally, but it's sad. It always sucks when this kind of thing happens. Dream Figures had to cancel their Godzilla King of the Monsters line due to COVID complications. I don't know what those complications were, but they had to cancel their Godzilla King of the Monsters line, which of course is a bummer. Okay, it is time to cover the big stuff. Let's jump into it. The entire Playmates Wave 1 of Godzilla vs. Kong merch released. This was out of nowhere. It came without any warning. All of the sudden, all of the figures were just out, but not in America. I believe the only place you can get these is in either Canada or Mexico. I think it might be Mexico based on the fact that a lot of these boxes have Spanish on them, but I don't know. You can't get them in America yet. You can only get the giant Godzilla and the giant Kong in America at the moment. The rest of this stuff, you're going to have to wait. These are on Walmart's websites. I have to be very specific about this because I misled some people in the last video. They're on Walmart's websites only at the moment. So you can check your Walmart website today and find out if you can get yours. They will be available in Walmart stores between September to December. That's when they should start popping up. It's entirely possible that they show up sooner, but don't hold your breath for them to show up before September. As I said in the last video, don't expect expect to see any more Godzilla vs. Kong figures outside of this first wave until much, much closer to the movie's release when we can expect a bigger ad campaign for the figures marketing them and we can also expect the figures to all come out including spoiler figures before the movie releases. For the meantime though, Playmates has decided to split up the Godzilla vs. Kong line into a non-spoiler category and a spoiler category. So the spoiler category will come out much later, the non-spoiler stuff is out now. Also, I'd like to point out that I totally called it in my last video saying that they would release six figures. I said that they would release three Godzilla figures and three Kong figures. And what do you know? They released three Godzilla figures and three Kong figures, sort of. They released three Godzillas, two Kongs, and one Skullcrawler, who for the purposes of making me seem smarter than I actually am and more in the know than I actually am, we will say is a Kong figure. Let's run through these figures. So there are brand new images. I have all the links down below so you can go check this stuff out for yourself. There are brand new images of figures like Giant Kong, who of course I have. He's in my room right now. I just need to unbox him, so whatever. Giant Kong, new images of him and Giant Godzilla. Of course, you have the boxes as well to go with each character. Again, these boxes feature Spanish on them, so I believe they are released in Mexico only at the moment. Not going to spend any time on those because I own them and I could talk about them whenever I open them. Let's jump into the other guys, starting with the Atomic Godzilla, who is probably my second. No, he's my third favorite. Sorry, he's my third favorite to be released. The Atomic Godzilla is a decent figure, looks good. I like how dark the paint job is actually. I know I complained about how dark Kong's paint job was in the last video, but this one looks really good. One of my favorite things about this figure is that it has really cool transparent dorsal fins and a very solid beam effect that appears to be retooled from either NECA or Monstroids. I can't quite tell, but it seems a little sus to me. It might have been stolen. But either way, the figure itself is solid, comes with a nice battle damage piece, a removable chest piece that has the gross, fleshy stuff underneath. Nasty, no story implications there. Solid sculpt with decent articulation. It's about as good as you're gonna get for a kid's toy. Moving right along into the next Godzilla figure that released, it's Godzilla with Radio Tower. This one I have a bit of problems with. First of all, it's the exact same Godzilla with a new paint job. That's a little disappointing. It should not feature the battle damage chest. This should be a clean Godzilla, no battle damage,
damage. I hate that it has battle damage chest because it makes it so much less worth it to buy. And also it doesn't give us a clean Godzilla. Now we only have the giant Godzilla with a clean skull. I hate when they do that. I hate when you can't just get a normal version of the figure. Maybe down the line they'll release one, but at the moment it doesn't look like we have a normal Godzilla. Overall, it's whatever. It's a decent figure. Same sort of figure, just new paint job. The dorsal fins look great. I do like them, although it would have been a little better to have once again a standard Godzilla with normal dorsal fins, but they did a great job with the ones that we have here. The blue center with the black tips looks awesome. Good touches there. The radio tower itself is quite strange. I don't know what the story implications of that are. Maybe Godzilla's gonna grab this thing in Hong Kong. Maybe he'll grab it off of Skull Island. Who knows? Is he even gonna grab it in the movie? Is it just an accessory for a kid's toy? I have no idea, but pretending it's going to be in the movie, it feels more like something Kong would wield. It's got crumples in weird areas that feels like something Kong would dual wield. He'd hold in both hands, I mean. And it seems like something that Kong would use to beat down Godzilla with. I can't see Godzilla utilizing weapons in a fight. That is not Godzilla. Godzilla would never do that unless we're talking like the Showa Godzilla, who, sure, he'll use a tree or something. But it's a very uncharacteristic thing for Godzilla to do. So I don't know. This might just be a Kong accessory that because Godzilla doesn't utilize anything in the movie, they gave to Godzilla as a Godzilla accessory. Moving on to the Kong with the axe. Everything I said in the last video still stands. So if you want to hear my thoughts on Kong with the axe, go check out the last video. It's all still relevant. There's a nice little bone pun on the back of the box here that made me face palm. Unless that's not a pun, in which case I'm just being overly harsh on the box. There will be an additional Kong figure that has not been released yet. I don't know why this wasn't released. This feels like it should have come out in place of the skull crawler, but whatever. An additional Kong figure was not released that will feature a fighter jet. That one seems like a clean Kong. No divots in the sculpt. Doesn't look like you're going to be able to remove pieces of him, or maybe you can. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Okay, got to give a bit of a spoiler warning here for Godzilla vs. Kong. If you don't want any spoilers for the movie, check out now before we talk about the rest of these figures, because although this is part of their non-spoiler set, the next figure does include some spoilers that maybe maybe shouldn't have been released yet, and that's why I say that probably the other Kong should have come out in place of this figure. All right, no spoiler people's gone. All right, let's jump into it. The new Skullcrawler is interesting. One thing I'm glad about is that he's referred to as a super species again, giving some connection to Kong Skull Island, shows that they're still aware of that continuity. I'm glad about that. This is a nice sculpted figure with good articulation. I'm glad that we finally have an articulated Skullcrawler. That was something we have been famously missing for years. The battle damage back is gross. I like it. It looks really nasty. It's probably the best battle damaged piece so far. The scratches on the shoulder also look cool. I wonder who gives him those. Those kind of look like Godzilla scratches, so who knows? I think it's really weird that this figure is red. Why is it red? Why is this a red skull crawler? I don't know. None of the other skull crawlers have ever been red. We have never seen them do anything that makes them turn red. They have never, ever, ever been red. Not in the comics, not in the movies. Why is he red here? I have no idea. Maybe it's blood? Probably not. Not. It might just be a weird red hybrid skull crawler. Okay, sure. Yeah, why not? It's also really weird that the promo only shows that this figure has a red head. Meanwhile, the figure itself is very red, at least the one that's been released. Now, there have been some issues where Playmates has terrible quality control and their figures come out with very different paint jobs depending on which one you get. Some people get one type of figure, some people get another. So it's possible that this is just a mistake. Who knows? The spoiler part of this figure comes in its accessory, the HEV or H E. AV. I don't know how they're going to pronounce it in the movie, but HEV, which stands for, it's an acronym for, the Hollow Earth Anti-Gravity Vehicle. So there you go. Confirmation that Monarch will be exploring the Hollow Earth. We already knew that, though. I mean, that's something that just came out in the plot description. It was teased in King of the Monsters and Credits, and it was teased in the upcoming Kong comic book, so we knew this would happen. But here we have the vehicle that they will be actually exploring the Hollow Earth with, so I guess it's a bit of a spoiler. I don't like it. I don't really like the design. It looks dumb. Not not in the sense that it's a terrible design, but in the sense that it looks like something from Halo. It's strange. This looks like the kind of thing you'd see actually in like an alien movie, like Alien Covenant or in Prometheus. It looks like it shouldn't belong in the MonsterVerse, which is why I say it's dumb. As a design, it's whatever. I don't actually really care about the design on its own, but in the context of the MonsterVerse, it seems a little out of place. I guess we'll just have to wait to see how they pull it off in the movie and what it does, but yeah, it looks a little out of place if you ask me. But there you go. Confirmation that Monarch will explore the Hollow Earth in this, meaning that there's absolutely no reason that they need to build a Mecha Godzilla. Why the hell do they build him? I don't know. Do they build him? Is he going to be in the new movie? Probably. I sure hope not, though. All right. The final thing we have here is the new Warbat reveal. This has been revealed from the 
back of the box on one of the figures. I believe the skull crawler. Maybe he's featured on some other boxes as well. But definitely on the back of the skull crawler box, we have the reveal for the Warbat. He comes with an Osprey, so that's cool. He's got an interesting design. Looks like something right out of Godzilla the Animated Series. Literally, it looks like they just took the design from something from that. I don't understand it. Why is he called Bat? It seems like a strange name for a snake-like monster. I'm assuming it's because he is going to fly around like a bat using his frills on his head. So yeah, he'll most likely be able to fly. He will probably be an antagonist to Kong. I'm not the only person who suspects that he will be a Kong antagonist in the movie. I don't think he's going to be the big bad world serpent. That is not a thing. I don't think the world serpent is going to be what Godzilla and Kong have to team up against. After Ghidorah, if you're telling me that a snake is going to be the big bad of the MonsterVerse, then the MonsterVerse has been so utterly miswritten for a snake to be the big bad over Ghidorah. Are you kidding me? What? <laughs> okay, whatever. It's all right. We don't know what it does, so I'm just saying the theory is a little ridiculous. It looks like it has a Shin Godzilla jaw, so that's kind of cool. I mean, it's more of a snake jaw than a Shin Godzilla jaw, because I guess Shin Godzilla borrowed it from snakes, but it's kind of a Shin Godzilla reminiscent look. Might feature some battle damage. I don't know. All the other figures seem to, so I can't totally tell here from the box, but it might feature some battle damage. It appears to have limited articulation, a turning point. I'm assuming just a ball plug in joint in the tail and then some wings or flappable flaps on the frills. There's a new name though. He's called Warbat now. If you remember, this figure had a promo image that surfaced online way before it was ever supposed to a long time ago, and that promo image was called Nozuki. So there was the original release, which called it Nozuki, and now there is this, which is the official release. The other one was kind of leaked. This one is the official release, and it is called Warbat, which is a infinitely less cool name. This has been theorized to have been changed specifically for the figure so that they can put the figure on shelves and it will sell better. Little kids can say Warbat much easier than they can say Nozuki. So that is probably the reason they did this. I don't know. I think another reason that this could happen is simply the Ramorak reason, where Ramorak is not actually the name of the giant skull crawler from the end of Kong Skull Island. There is no name for that thing. The book refers to it as the Skull Devil. So it's just one of those situations where they named it specifically for the toys so that they could have something to call it on the toys. They didn't even make any toys of that figure. It was just for the merchandise in general. They could refer to it as Ramorak rather than just Big Skull Crawler. That might be the case here, where in the movie, it's just a big snake, and then they called it Nozuki for no reason, and then they decided to change the name to Warbat, because maybe that's a little more reflective of its flying nature in the movie, and Nozuki is a bit hard for kids to pronounce. Either way, I personally prefer the name Nozuki over Warbat. Warbat sounds like the kind of thing a 10-year-old would say when they very first transform into this big monster. It does not seem like the kind of thing that Monarch or anyone else would call a giant monster Titan. They'd probably call it Nozuki. That's sounds like a much more reasonable name. Wow, I have rambled on forever. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. See you guys next time for the next one. D-Man out.